Son, and for reminding us because of your name we will be persecuted, but you will be with us. Therefore, as your word is coming forth to us, use your word to strengthen us so that we never give up our faith in times of challenges, in times of difficulties, in times of distress. We will always remain faithful. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today I want you to take those uh, Bible reading lessons to go. Take them home with you. They are very profound. Uh, they are very uh, meditative. Bring them during the week and I'm sure to be a blessing to you. Today we are not going to touch any of those, but they all affect us. We are going to continue with our series of stewardship, which was begun by Heidi last week. And I have been titled, Am I an owner or a steward? Do I own myself the talents, the time, the treasures that I have? Am I the owner of them or am I just a steward of them? But before that, I want to thank all of you for the various roles that you played for the 125th anniversary. I've been told that you were very nice. I've not seen one before, so I cannot compare. But you guys did great. And I thank all of you. I saw Daniel Mayer in Toronto for the first time. And I saw Heidi in a great place. So let's give them a big shout There's a lot of wine in the cellar. There's a lot of good food. He 
with Mary. But that very night, the Lord said, I'm taking away that soul of yours because it doesn't belong to you. This morning, you have to answer that question. Are you an owner or a steward? Does he own you or you own yourself? There's a profound scripture in Psalm 24, verse 1. And it's so plain, self explanatory. The earth is the law, and everything that it is. The world and those who dwell in, they are for the Lord. All of us are for the Lord. So if you have mistakenly assumed that you own yourself, it is my prayer that you change your mind. Are you God stewards of your resources? Or you are owner of your own time, talent, and treasure? This beautiful church of ours, since the days of William Kaiser, has been run by stewards, by parishioners like you and me. And in our time, we must do our things. In our time, we must give our time, talent, and treasures. Oh, one may ask, what at all do we need money for? What at all do we use money for in these churches? Well, the income that we get comes from donations, treasures that we give to God. In this church, wardens, vestry, altar guilds, ushers, servants, keep their time. My goodness, for that matter, they keep their time. They can do something about us with that time, but they give those time to God. So you can also give time to God. Oh, the, the French man, they have to come to practice. That is time that they can use to do something else. What about talents? I can't bring this like Kevin does, like a uh, uh,
evangelism and outreach. We must go out there in various forms and ways to share the word of God with others. That is part of our stewardship. As part of our stewardship, we must have some funds to support the community in various ways that we can. And all of these things can be done with the money that you give us. So it is very important for all saints church to remind itself every year of this great original responsibility towards stewardship. So my dear one, please reflect on how you and I can play our part to fulfill our obligations. As faithful to us, especially around this time of the year, that we are making financial decisions and planning for 2017, we must also plan to give to our church. We must also plan to donate, to pledge, to tithe, and to give as offering. I want to encourage you to plan today to be a good steward if you have not been in the past. Even to do more than you are doing. Otherwise, you will give all sorts of excuses and reasons why you are not given to this church. Benjamin Franklin once said, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. We will not fail. This church will move from glory to glory. This church will move from one step to the other, doing great things for God in Rise's time. Therefore, we also listen to several Western churches. Those who fail to learn from the past are doomed to repeat it. We will learn from the past. Therefore, we will not repeat what we did in the past. The long and short of this is that we all have the same things. All of us here, all of us here have the same things. We all have time, we all have talent, we all have treasure, but in different sizes and quantities. Hello? Hello, somebody hearing me? We all have time, talent, and treasure. But they are in different sizes and quantity. What is God's expectation? We are all expected to give time, to give talent, and treasure according to our ability. You can't just say that, oh, okay, I, I give my time, so I, I pay my deals, or I give donations, so I'm done. No. You can give also time and talent in different quantities. You cannot say, I sent for the church, so that is it. You can also give a little bit of your treasure and a little bit of your talent. You cannot say that I am here always doing stuff for God. You can also give a little of your treasure of intolerance. What does the Bible say in Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 17? Every man, every woman, every youth shall give us shall is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God which he has given you. Okay, so I'm talking about the, 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 the young ones. The young ones have to learn to tax very early. So your, your pocket money that you are given, make sure you put a percentage aside and get a card in the church and start giving it as tight. The earlier you learn to give time to God, the better you will get used to it. In the past, we were not trained early enough to do some of these things. But that is what God expects us. Every man, every woman, every youth shall give us he is able. It's not compulsory, but as you are able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which He has given you. I would like us to pause and reflect and probably interact if there is uh, questions or things bothering about the finances of this church or about how 
we spend our income on about any that's on your mind. But I am here simply to remind all of us that it's our duty. And it's important that we continue that duty. Because for the past 125 years, people have kept this church going by their faithful stewardship. <clears throat> and it's our turn to do likewise. It's our turn that we must be able to do great children's service, even if you have to buy the materials or get or pay volunteers to take care of them. And all this will come out of the bodies that we give to the church. It's a series that we are doing for the whole months. So uh, we'll continue from next week. And then we'll continue to the end of the month. And then we will try and have a fair understanding why it's important to be faithful to us. Let us bow our heads and pray. Are you a faithful steward? Or you are the owner of your time, your talents, and your treasure, and you do whatever you like with it. Today, I'm here to remind you, I'm here to inform you, I'm here to let you know those expectations. We must give as we are able, according to our ability. We all have the same things, time, talent, and treasure, but in different quantities and sizes. Therefore, we cannot, we cannot all give the same. But I want to encourage you, no matter how tough, how challenged you are, how financially bankrupt you have become, I'm a challenge that give to God a new surprise. It's a God who always wish for us to do our part before his promises come to us. Try him. Test him and see if you will not open the heavens and bless you beyond your expectation. That's the God that I'm talking about as well. He owns you and everything that you have. Give some back to him to bless this church, to bless the work that is being done here. So that he will bless you with your father and your future. Just ask God, God, I want to be a good steward. From today, I want to be a good steward of my, of the time that you give me, of the talents that you give me, of the treasures. I want to be a good steward.